this, this was, uh, uh, I mean, I had to get in there and figure out everything. Ron was, Ron would have, there was so much. And the family, like I said earlier, they were so fair and honest about who Ron was, who he was not. They were not sugarcoating him in any kind of martyrdom. Um, so, I mean, spending time with them, the, the, the stuff they gave me, the, the, the transcripts that I got from Craig, the diary that his family gave me, that was my secret weapon. I've said it before and I'll say it again because it's really true. That's what gave me the monologue of the guy. The Socratic dialogue, so I could then go act and have the dialogue. That's, that's what really empowered me, that I had mine, it was my secret, you know, I shared it with it with John Mark, but that was my sort of my Bible, because now I had the man who he was when he was all alone with himself. Yeah. Not who he was talking, not only talking to you about, well, here's what I do at the Dallas Fires Club, you know, and he, he's a salesman, and that's, that's definitely him, but I, I, got, I got a piece when I got the diary, which was the guy before, he was selling anything. You know, he wasn't even selling, he was just trying to sell things to himself about whether he was lost, what he was doing, or he was, you know, if he could make a little cash on Monday, or if he could, you know, hook up and shag Sheila from the, from the sign, because she gave him a double for the price of the single. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was just a small town wandering, you know, before he had HIV. And HIV, ironically, is when Ron Woodard, in my opinion, really found purpose and direction in his life. Sad, but true. Found the first thing is like to fight and call for 24 7. And he did it for seven more years. Jerry, you know, Rayon's another composite. He's not an actual uh, person, but you played them, obviously, in the past. Mark David Chapman, others. What was this experience like in terms of the question she's asking and creating this character within the context of a real story? I think I was lucky because I didn't have some of the constraints that can come along the obligation that you can feel the responsibility when you take on a character that actually lived. Um, she does feel like someone said earlier that Jennifer, she feels as real as ever to me now. Um, you know, some days I miss her a little bit. And there's so much to fall in love with there. She had so much grace and charm. And, uh, you know, I would hope if I was ever faced with those enormous challenges that I would have some of those same incredible qualities that she did. Uh, yeah, after that. That scene where you had to go and face your father mm -hmm. was extraordinary too. I mean, you, that really had to present some sort of challenge to you. How did you prepare to play that scene? Well, it was interesting because I was really focused and, and committed on set, I, you know, I remember being concerned once I lost the wig, I lost the, the tights, and I lost the heels and the eyelashes and the lipstick and all of the accoutrements, um, would she still be there? Um, but what was great is when I put on Ron's suit, I don't know in the film if it's clear that, is it that it's Ron's suit? Absolutely. Yes. It is. Okay. Uh, uh, because, I'm sorry. No, speak your mind, baby. Come on, give me the eyes. I want to be right there with you. I can make that dream come true. Should we all leave the room? You guys can watch. It's all good on that. Great, so I can't even see who's talking about me. <laughs> Jennifer, I mentioned in the intro here, I, I really do believe you're the heart and soul of this film. You're that character. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're, that, you're that character that traverses both sides of this and has to walk that line. Can you talk about this? Because it's, it's a composite, basically, the comparison. We, Jean-Marc, oh, I would go into any battle with you. Um, Jean-Marc and I talked a lot about not kind of having too much fun and keeping it simple and not playing up to the performances around me because these guys were just having such a good time and you kind of couldn't help but feel like, I want to do that. Um, but just keeping her who she was, which 
you know, a medical professional who has seen all this before and who's been around to death and who isn't cowed by this and who isn't, you know, who is smart and, and all that and just kind of staying true to her. And that was, that was, it was, it was really well written. So. But you're walking that, that road that many people in the audience are walking too. They're suddenly becoming educated as they go along and they're seeing something that they had not seen before, which is... It's great to, to get to play someone who believes something so strongly and makes a turn. And makes a turn for all the right reasons. You know, her, her heart opens up, her heart becomes bigger than her medical brain, and all, all of the right reasons she... Um, she changes who she is by the end of the film, and that's what you that's what you hope. Even if with the smallest, smallest role, you hope that you'll have some journey and it. You know, these guys gave that to me in spades. She's not a real person, if anyone's wondering, because no one told me that, and I researched her for a while. <laughs>